biology like polymerase chain reaction and blotting techniques. So under this we will discuss PCR, what is PCR, what are its requirements, what is its procedure and what are its applications. Then we will discuss different types of PCR. After polymerase chain reaction we will know about various blotting techniques. So first of all what is PCR? Basically polymerase chain reaction it is a technique by which in laboratory setting we can amplify DNA from any source. From any source I mean whether it's from a viral, bacterial, plant or animal. From DNA from any source can be amplified. But why we need to amplify? Because we need to amplify for diagnosis and for further future research. So, what is the procedure of polymerase chain reaction? Basically, PCR use DNA polymerase. We know we have discussed in DNA replication that there is enzyme polymerase which helps the DNA to replicate. So, we use the same enzyme. DNA polymerase to amplify the target DNA by repeated cycles of denaturation, renaturation and synthesis. After each cycle, the DNA is replicated. So, leading to exponential increase in DNA because after every cycle of polymerase chain reaction, DNA is doubled. And the amplified products then can be separated by gel electrophoresis and detected by sudden blotting and hybridization technique and then can be further sequenced for various research purposes. The PCR allows DNA in even in a single cell, hair follicle, form to be amplified. So it is such an efficient procedure by which even the small amount of DNA could be amplified so that we can easily study and we can diagnose. So each cycle, as I have told, double the genetic material. So like for in first cycle, there will be two copies, then four, then eight. Likewise, there will be exponential increase with each cycle. And we can produce billions of copies of single genes. So you can see that like this, it is a template DNA. In first cycle, it became, uh, it is double, like uh, two strands of DNA become four. Then in Second cycle it became 8, then 16 and 32 and as such it goes and goes there is exponential amplification resulting in billions of copies. So what are the requirements? How PCR works? For this we need a selected DNA. We should know which DNA needs to be amplified. Then we need 4 deoxyribonucleotide because these will build the DNA like for DATP, DGTP, DCTP and DTTP because these are the building blocks for new DNA. Then we should have primer. What is primer? It is a single stranded oligonucleotide which is 20 to 35 nucleotides long and it is complementary to flanking region of the DNA. What do you mean by flanking region? That is the region which is just before the region of DNA of interest. So we should have primer which is complementary to the flanking region of the DNA. So we don't need to know the nucleotide sequence of DNA of interest but we should know the DNA sequence of the flanking region because we need a primer to start the polymerase chain reaction which is complementary to the flanking region of the target DNA. Then we need a thermostable DNA polymerase. We need DNA polymerase enzyme but it should be thermostable because we in PCR we go to as high as 95 degree centigrade. So we need a polymerase enzyme which can work at such high temperature. So we get thermostable DNA polymerase from TAP polymerase which is isolated from thermal aquatical which is heat stable and does not get denaturated at high temperature. So these are the various requirements for polymerase chain reaction. So first we should know the DNA of interest. Then we should have primers. 
which should be complementary to flanking regions of DNA of interest. Then we should have enzyme DNA polymerase. Then we should have nucleotide triphosphates. And last, we should have some buffers and cofactors as required. This is the machine. This is a thermocycler. This is a polymerase chain reaction machine which helps us to multiply, which helps us to amplify the DNA of interest. So, this is a polymerase chain reaction. You can see, first we should have DNA of interest and this DNA is first denatured at high temperature. It is subjected to high temperature. Why denatured? So that the two strands could separate. Then we should have primer which is complementary to flanking region of DNA of interest and we think the second temperature is at 50 degree centigrade so that the primer could anneal with the single stranded DNA. Then the third temperature is 72 degree centigrade in which the DNA polymerase will synthesize new DNA. So these are the cycles of polymerase chain reaction. Let us discuss in detail. So the first step is denaturation which is at 96 degree centigrade. So target DNA is subjected to this temperature so that DNA could get denatured and could separate into single strand. The second step is annealing which occurs at 50 degree centigrade. So reaction mixture is cooled to 50 degree centigrade so that primers can bind to their complementary sequence on the single stranded DNA template. And the third step is extension, which occurs in 72 degree centigrade. The so temperature is again raised to this so that TAP polymerase can synthesize new strands complementary to original DNA by adding deoxyribonucleotide to the 3 hydroxyl end of primer. So the new strand extends in 5 to 3 direction across the target DNA to make complementary copies of the target. Now, each newly synthesized strand includes a sequence at 5N, that is complement to primer. So, each newly synthesized strand can act as a template for successive cycles. So, because the each strand has a complementary strand to primer, it can act as a template for successive cycles. And this results in exponential increase in amount of DNA with each cycle. And in only 20 to 30 cycles, we can amplify DNA by million to a billion fold. So, this is a very efficient procedure to amplify the amount of DNA. Now, what are its applications? So, first of first the application is in clinical diagnosis. So, now if there is any genetic disorder due to some DNA defect or DNA mutation, we can easily detect by amplifying the DNA. So, we can amplify the DNA and then we can study to detect for diagnosis of any clinical disorder. We can also diagnose viral and bacterial diseases. Then it is very important for diagnosis of no abundant nucleic acid sequence. Viruses like HIV have long latency period. So, it is very difficult to detect in early stage of infection but with help of PCR, we can quantify the viral load, viral DNA and can easily diagnose in earlier stages of the disease. Then we can diagnose cancer, bacterial infections like TB with help of PCR. Then it is important and it is very helpful for prenatal diagnosis like DNA from chronic virus samples or cells from aminosynthesis are amplified by PCR for prenatal diagnosis of various disorders like sickle cell anemia, beta thalassemia, cystic fibrosis. So if you want to see that whether child is suffering from such disorder, we can do PCR to the amino cells from amino synthesis, obtained from amino synthesis and can diagnose easily. Then is comparison of normal gene to its mutant gene. So PCR amplifies the mutant gene so that we can easily study the difference between normal and mutated gene. Then for forensic analysis, the DNA sample from single hair, a tiny spot of blood or small sample of semen is sufficient to determine whether the samples come from a specific individual. So it is very helpful in forensic analysis. 
then for archaeology and paleontology amplification of rare fragments of dna from extinct species and comparing them with living species can easily help us to reveal missing links in the evolution so it is also helpful in studying about old uh, between species which are extinct now now pcr and covid detection now it is an interesting part we know that during covid we use pcr to detect whether a person is suffering from covid or not so according to icmr advisory the ct value of rt pcr reaction that is the number of cycles at which fluorescence of pcr product is detectable over and above the background signal so for detection of covid we take the CT value. CT means cycles. That after how many cycles that the virus could be detected. So if viral load is less, it will take many cycles to amplify, amplify and to be detected. But if viral load is more, it will be detected earlier. So we can diagnose whether the person is suffering from COVID or not by determining in how much cycles the DNA is detectable. So the CT value refers to number of cycles after which virus can be detected. If higher number of cycles are required, it implies that virus went undetected. When the number of cycles are was lower, the lower CT value, the higher the viral load. So if the value is low, if we can detect the virus in lesser cycles, it means the viral load is high because virus has been spotted in fewer cycles. So, for COVID detection, according to ICMR, if CT value is below 35, it is considered positive. So, again, this is how PCR helps in COVID detection and moreover, we consider the cycle. In how many cycles the virus is detected and if the cycles are less, it means there is high viral load and if cycles are more, it means the viral load is negligible. Now the question is, in PCR, aquatic thermophilus is preferred over E. coli because it is thermostable at temperature at which DNA liquefies, yes. Aquatic thermophilus phyllis polymerase is uh, stable at high temperature as compared to E. coli. It helps in proofreading. It is done in more precisely. It does not require primer. So the answer is, it is more thermostable. So we prefer polymerase enzyme from aquatic, aquatic thermophilus. Now the topmost point. So, uh, so we should know that PCR is a lab technique by which selected DNA sequence from any source, viral, bacterial, plant or animal can be amplified into millions of copies within few hours. It uses DNA polymerase to amplify target DNA by repeated cycles of denaturation, renaturation and synthesis. And with each cycle DNA is doubled leading to exponential increase in DNA. For DNA-PCR requirements are selected DNA strand, 4 deoxyribonucleotide, primer and thermostable DNA polymerase enzyme which is obtained from aquatic thermophilus. Its application is for clinical diagnosis, forensic medicine analysis, clinical diagnosis of bacterial, viral diseases and cancer and it is also very helpful in studying archaeology and paleontology. So this was uh, about what is PCR and I have discussed the procedure for simple PCR technique. In next lecture, after a small break, we will discuss various types of PCR and we will discuss in detail various blotting techniques. So, meet you after a short break.